Thank you. So, I think I'm live. Yes, you are. Hopefully. Cool. So, let's start. Yeah, I will talk about the ASP.NET Core health checks uh, today. But first, I will quickly introduce myself. So, my name is Jürgen Gutsch. I'm from southern Germany. I'm a Microsoft MVP for several years, five years, I think. I'm blogging, writing um, a lot, leading a .NET user group uh, since years, and speaking at several community events and meetups. And I also started a stream on Twitch, not regularly, but from time to time. Um, and I'm a software engineer at the U in Basel. So, so I'm working in Switzerland, living in, in southern Germany. Hopefully the sound is Good. Last time, last year, the so first 10 minutes were awful. Hope it's, it's going well this time. So I have a quick agenda. Uh, I need to quickly um, close, not close, uh, minimize Skype window. So I see two versions of the agenda currently. So yeah, I will quickly, quickly introduce ASP.NET Core health checks. And then I will show a basic implementation of the health, health checks. Um, and there are also a lot of um, checks in the community. So we'll have a quick look there and how to visualize um, the health of uh, subsystems of an application. And if there's some time left, I will uh, show you quickly an enhanced scenario. So I built something with uh, Docker containers to show how this could look like. So all the sources I will show today are uh, will be available on GitHub. So the repo already exists, but I will uh, push it afterwards. So what's next exactly about the health checks? What are the health checks? So the health checks are kind of a um, framework inside the ASP.NET framework to check uh, the health of application subsystems, maybe databases or uh, services, which are not inside the application. Or you can also check um, your, your system. You can check memory, you can check um, the space of your hard drive, whatever you want to check. Um, you can also handle the, the health of your sus subsystems. So you get a feedback. Um, the checks give you the state of your subsystems and you can handle them. You can show the states in your application. And you can provide an endpoint to show the information about the health of your current application and of the subsystems of the current application. So the namespace is microsoft.extensions.diagnostics.healthchecks. You'll find all the stuff here. And yeah, a little bit of history. So I am was pretty much involved into health checks. So the development started at 2016, I think. I'm not sure when exactly. But during the MVP summit in 2016, Glenn Condren asked via, via Twitter, um, if there's anyone who want to attend the ASP.NET hackathon and help him to write checks for the ASP.NET health checks, the first version, I think it was a draft um, at that time. So Damien said yes, I said yes, and we met Glenn Condren and Andrew Nurse at the ASP.NET hackathon and started hacking some checks. Then it moved through some repositories until it makes it into the product. So it is in the product till ASP.NET code 2.2, I think. What can you do with the health checks? You know, well, um, maybe you mentioned it. Um, it is monitoring the health of parts of your application or your uh, or subsystems of your application. I mentioned it, databases, some web APIs, gRPC services, any other services or the environment of your application. You can check memory, performance, drive space, and so on. And you can provide the health state of your application, including the health of the subsystems uh, you want to check. So you get an endpoint that, that um, tells you about the health of the whole system, of the entire system. 
I think, yeah, that's almost about the theory. Why should you use the health checks? Yeah, you can handle unhealthy states in your application. You can maybe provide information to the, to the users that some of the subsystems or databases are not available currently. Uh, you can keep your app partially running in case of an unhealthy state of a subsystem. Maybe there's a, yeah, a specific database not running and you can uh, keep your application partially running without this uh, database, for example, not, or to, you can tell the users about the unhealthy state and so on. You can switch to alternative subsystems in case of an uh, unhealthy state of this um, specific subsystem. Maybe you have a different one. And what I didn't mention here in the slide is you can provide a, an endpoint, I think it's the exactly same endpoint, to uh, the what is called Azure Load Balancer thing. Um, so you can connect your Azure environment to this um, endpoint and the load balancer can, is able to, to switch um, the applications or the, the sw uh, switch between the instances of your application. Okay, let's show some code. Um, in this um, section, I will um, demo you a simple implementation of uh, health checks. So this is a kind of an agenda of this section. Uh, just created a ASP.NET Core MVC application using the, the uh, .NET CLI. I already did this. Then we will configure some basic, simple health checks without any logic in it. Um, we will implement a custom health check, and we will use the health, health check service to to uh, call the checks and to to visualize the states of the subsystems. This is the basic configuration of the startup of your ASP.NET Core application. You can add the health check services in the configure service method, and you need to provide the the endpoint um, I mentioned. This is the endpoint uh, which provides the state of your application, including the subsystems. So we say app use health checks. So I think next is the demo. Exactly, I will switch to the console. Hopefully the font size is okay. We can increase it a little bit. And I'll open VS Code. and go to the startup. And this is a common ASP.NET Core MVC application. I already added the health checks here, uh, the health check services, and I added the endpoint. This is a little different than in the slides because in ASP.NET Core 3.0, we have the new um, endpoint routing and the middlewares which provides routes are now uh, registered here with map something, map controller route or map health checks. This is the endpoint I mentioned. So this is a, the basic configuration just to add health checks or just to uh, have the possibility to add health checks. So now I want to quickly add a few health checks. So this is a way to add a um, delegate based or lambda based uh, health check. Pretty simple. This doesn't add us nothing here. It just outputs a healthy state. So we can say add check. There are um, some overrides here. We can do it the delegate way, or we can add an health check instance. We'll see this later. Um, we can do it the generic way to add a health, health check type here, or as well with the with the func. We get a health ch health check result. No, oh, we return a result. That's that's it. So that's one. We can also return an unhealthy state, so uh, uh, some options. 
some things to return. We can return healthy, unhealthy, or something in between, degraded. So we leave this. And I have another quick sample, which is more useful, I think. Um, it is a check to ping a subsystem. Okay, this one starts a ping. Oops, wrong keys here. And did you know that you can press Windows dot to <laughs> add emojis here? Yeah, it works. <laughs> okay, we create a new ping. I set uh, send the ping to localhost because it's currently it's hard to find the service on Azure somewhere which responds to a ping. So I think all the Azure services don't respond, so I can't ping.netconf.net. I also cannot ping my own blog and so on, so I need to find find a, um, a host to ping. So if it's not a success date, then I will return unhealthy. If this needs more than 100 milliseconds, I think, yes. Then it's degraded, it's pretty slow then. And if it's all fine, I will return in healthy state. So, in case of errors, I will also return an unhealthy state. I think that's with the delegate checks, but we can also create um, more, yeah, more complex checks using classes. So it's this one. You can um, create an eye health check. So I need to find the interface. Ah, it's not implemented correctly. So I need to get this one, the cancellation token. And now it's implemented. So it's almost similar to the to the lambda expressions here. So we'll hide this. So we will return a health check result and get a context and we get a cancellation token. So this is a more uh, complex way. Um, we can check the state of something. So this is just an example. I set it to true. So it's healthy. And if it's if the subsystem is healthy, I will return a healthy state and otherwise an um, unhealthy state. So here, this line, you can put your checks, whatever you want to check. I will um, show you a more useful sample later. Okay. So we need to add this. Let's say add check. I will use the generic way. So. And I need to add a name. Next, oops, this could be null, I think. And here we need to add some text. Oop. Um, I have a different keyboard layout here, so now it's working. So I'm switching between German and um, US American layout. Okay, so this should work. But um, I this should work. If I call the um, the endpoint, let's try it. I press a five. A five. <laughs> also, the language is switching between German and English. Uh, please tell me if something bad with the with the screen font size, audio, and so on. Okay, this should work. Call the right browser. Oh, that opens in, a, in the wrong window. So, yeah, here it is. So it's running. If I, if I press F5, um, I see something's going on here. And the end. It was, I think, 
it's unhealthy. Yeah, it's unhealthy. The complete application is unhealthy because of this here. If I switch this to the healthy state and set it to OK and restart it, it will be healthy. So this is the endpoint. Okay, we can extend the endpoint a little bit. So I need to find a snippet for this. Yep, there are some health check options we need to set. It's in the configure. And we can have these lines here. Say predicated true. Say response writer is the U. I response writer. Um, need to find the using. So this isn't there. Okay, let's check the namespace. Task check options response writer okay let's remove this um, I will show it in the next demo then okay that's about the, the one endpoint but what about visualizing so to visualize the the health of your of your application um, I can use the health check service and you can call all the checks on demand and um, display resu the results in your um, view. So to do this, I'll go to the home controller and inject the health check service. So. Like this. This is already in the DI container, so we can use it wherever we want. And I'm going to add a new view. So I also need to add the views here. So just copy the privacy and call it health and put some code in it. So, okay. So we use the diagnostic health checks here. Our model is the health report. And then we write out the, the status of the model. So the model is the health report. We return this from the control action. We can display the duration of all the checks and we can iterate through the checks and um, display the state of all the checks we have. Okay, let's uh, change this back to unhealthy. And return a better message and restart it. So it should be there. Yeah. So we haven't created a link for the health. We'll do it. So I think I did something wrong. Ah, the endpoint, the endpoint, and the view do have the same URL. So. I will rename this endpoint. And yep, here it is. Uh, no, I'm wrong. I did it wrong. So the <laughs> I shouldn't have changed the 
the endpoint here, it should be under home health exactly. So that's it. So the state is unhealthy. We need it five milliseconds, seconds, yeah, milliseconds in that case. So the foo is healthy, the bar is not healthy, healthy. And we have the ping here. We should have set the name. And we have the sample health check. So the ping is healthy. Do we have a name here? No. Tech. Uh, should be ping. We don't see it yet. Don't know why. Anyway, so it's working. We have the um, the health state of our subsystems here, and we can also add an indicator to the page to see if the entire application is healthy or not. So to do this, uh, open the layout CSHTML and do some dependency injection here. So you can do a dependency injection in your view. I inject the health check service and I use it in a code block. Let's put it here. So we await the check health async and with this we get the health health state. So I think this is a health state response or health result. So we can see it here. This is a health report. Okay, that we have the same in the layout. And we can check the states here. So as um, set a background um, color in case um, the state is unhealthy, degraded, or um, I don't set it in case it's all healthy. So and I'm um, able to set it here. And let's see what happens. I need to rebuild it, I think. Yeah, so let's close this one. Um, now the header is red and unhealthy. And if we change this, and let's say this is degraded to rebuild it again, it should be orange then or whatever is set here. Orange, yes. So, and the, and the healthy state doesn't have a background color, so it's, it's white. Okay, do we have any questions until yet? If not, I will continue with the slides. Hey, Jürgen. Okay, let's go oh, there. <laughs> And let's have a quick look into wait, wait, wait. what the community me. did. So what I expected after I um, had another look into the health checks, health checks, um, I paused playing around with the health checks for a year or so, and I didn't have a look until this time, this period. And after I had another look, I expected some health checks created by Microsoft, but there are almost no health checks. The reason is that it's pretty simple to implement some. And the other reason is that um, the community already created a lot of health checks. So if you see this slide, um, yeah, if you're inter interested, go to this repository. It's by Isaac Burial. I hope I pronounce it right. He created the ASP.NET Core Diagnostic Health Checks package or packages. On the right side, um, you see a list of, of um, NuGet packages available. So you can check the system. You can check network, SQL Server, MongoDB, and so on, Redis, Event Store. Uh, SQLite, a lot of Azure stuff. Also, um, Amazon Web Services can be checked, Hangfire, SignalR, and so on, Kubernetes. Um, 
and I think the list will increase a lot. So uh, this project is a port from BeatPulse and it also provides um, uh, UI features. So I'll uh, um, show you in the more enhanced demo. So please have a look. Um, also use some of these um, packages to check uh, SQL Server or, or SQLite and so on. Um, also try to check um, um, SQLite. I think this doesn't work currently. I need to check it again. Maybe I did something wrong or, other than, or if not, I will um, raise an issue here. So it wasn't possible to connect to a SQLite database in a, inside a Docker container. That didn't work. Okay. So about the health check UI. So also in this project, they created a pretty nice health check UI. So you can add it with um, with this service registration and with these um, middlewares here. And this also provides uh, another endpoint, which is uh, specific for this UI. And it also provides a um, health checks UI endpoint with, an, with a nice um, HTML UI. So let's have a look. Uh, what I did for this um, demonstration, I created something like a dummy weather statistics application. I um, downloaded a lot of weather data from Washington State. I have uh, implemented four different uh, weather stations, Bremerton, Cedar Lake, and Monroe, and a health monitoring app. And what's missing currently is a so weather data visualization app, but this is not important here. And it's all running on Docker. So let's have a look. So I will close this one here and go to the console. Now let's check it's this one. Oops. Yeah. And open VS Code. So, so these are. Uh, six applications. This one doesn't count, it's not implemented yet. Um, added a common library to share classes. I also shared the, the, the DB context. This is, this is the health monitoring app and we have the four different weather stations here. I'll go through um, EF Core to connect to the SQLite database. So this is all wired together with Docker Compose. Um, this is the um, visualization app, the health, health visualization. I export some ports. It depends on the, on the four stations. And I also need to link the, the Docker containers together. Um, this is uh, Docker networking stuff here. And I created four different um, uh, Docker files per um, container I want to run. So, so let's quickly look here. This is um, the configure services of the of the um, check visualization app. So I created the dummy foo uh, health check just to check whether it's working or not. And I added a database context check. I think this is the only health check provided by Microsoft, the only um, uh, finished health check. Then I added a check for uh, URI. So this is called URL group. It's in the URI package. Um, you can set a URI you want to check, uh, give a name. Like with the other ones, you need to tag this, or it makes sense to tag this. I need to filter it later on. So I created four ping checks and four data checks. There's this one, four checks only um, 
check whether the services are, are available or not. And the other one um, are really loading data and check whether there's a result or not. So I also added the health checks UI and I also set it to the to the um, to the apps here. So this is the health checks. This is what I wanted to show in the previous demo. Um, you need to define a different response writer. And with this, you can enhance your own endpoint to add some more information. I will show it quickly. And I need to add the health checks UI middleware. Then. So I don't want to start it here with VS Code. I use the console. Oops, the console. This one. And run Docker compose up. It's all compiled. And it only needs to start. So the services are available. So we see the name Docker container here. here. This one is the uh, monitoring app, and the other ones are the stations. So then let's call it. And I think I need to call it port 5000. It's not HTTPS. And it's running. This one is just a single um, web API application. So, and this is our endpoint we, we extended. So now we get a JSON result. We get this state here. It's not a longer a simple text. And we get a lot of more information. So the duration, we get all the entries. These are all the checks we have. And the health checks UI also provides an endpoint. This is almost the same, but um, needed for the for the UI. So, and this is the health checks UI provided by these guys, by the community. So, and here we see all the all the um, services that are running. So these are running in the Docker container. This is in the alternate Docker container, but in the in the um, visualization app. And this is our dummy. Just to, sh uh, to check. So what happens if we kill one of these? Um, so like this. Okay. Move it a little bit. So. Here are the containers running, so it looks a little bit bad. Well, we'll resize it all the way around, so like this. Okay. And I want to kill one of them. Let's say the weather station in Kent was. Oh, Docker container kill. Okay, so we use the ID. It, it's just Docker kill. It's it's not Docker container kill. Really? I tried it with Docker container. There you go. Yeah, now it's killed. Thank and you. We're a little bit long here, Jorgen, so we need to Yeah, I'm almost, almost done. It's just this last demo. Okay, you can see now the, the station in Kent was offline. It's offline, and um, you see the checks are unhealthy now. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Um, I say thank you. And... Hopefully you enjoyed it. I, I really like seeing the, the level of community interaction here with the health checks. You're right.
they're so simple to write and already so many of these that it really help with those other integrations and services that we want to know the health of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of implementations here, a lot of documentation in, um, from the community. Yep. And, and the user interface, right? We saw the same thing with the folks who do Swagger stuff to have mm -hmm. Health Checks UI. It, it's, yeah. it's something every user administrator is going to need. Yeah. So absolutely. Yeah. I didn't know that was out there. I'm, I definitely need to make sure I add that to my applications going forward. <laughs> cool stuff. Yeah. Great. All right, well, All thanks right. so much, Jurgen. Thanks a bunch, Jurgen. Thanks, Theo. Thanks for hosting. Thanks for having me. All righty, <laughs> we will see you next time. Bye-bye. For sure, bye.